Hi there, welcome to another episode of Multivariable Calculus. Uh, last episode, if you will, we discussed uh, position velocity acceleration and the TNB framework. And what we're going to do this time is build on that TNB framework a little bit. We're going to break down acceleration into its normal and tangential component. And to start off, let's just consider a really simple example. Consider a rocket. A rocket that is launching from the Earth straight upward. All right, so in this case, since that acceleration upward is going in the same direction that the that the rocket is launching in, the acceleration and the tangent vector are going to be the same exact direction. Therefore, this is going to have a very strong tangential component of acceleration. And if it's going straight up, it's not turning at all, then its, it's normal component of acceleration will be zero because it's not turning. So this is a basic, simple example of a um, tangential acceleration. Now we can go to a um, maybe not quite a simple example where this rocket has launched up and now it's going to orbit the Earth or at least maybe the satellite that it was delivering is going is to be orbiting. Um, so this is kind of another extreme case here because if you consider when the rocket's done, it's spent its fuel, it's gone, the satellite is just cruising along in its orbit that it's, it's going to stay in there then its, it's velocity is actually going to be constant. It's just going to be going at that same speed all the way around. Um, but of course now it's turning. Um, before when it was going straight up it wasn't turning, but now it's turning. So since that speed is going to be constant, it's going to have a zero for its component of tangential acceleration because there's no change in speed. However, since it's turning, that means it's definitely going to have a normal component of acceleration. And of course, that acceleration is always going to be in the direction of the Earth because that's where the force is coming from. F equals ma, and that force is causing that acceleration towards the Earth. So that is a pretty clear example of just normal acceleration without, without any tangential acceleration. So those are sort of two extremes. But um, what's a little bit more complicated is we want to look at something that's sort of in the middle. And if we take the same example, this rocket, we've got a pretty clear transitional stage where it's, um, it's launched straight up, but now it's kind of going to curve over into its orbit. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at that. And now if we take a look at that, it's a bit more complicated because it's going to have both normal and tangential components of acceleration. And so we can see here, if we, if we plot this out, we can just see how to break those down and how, how to determine what those are. All right, so say we're going to look at this trajectory at the point right here. And first thing we want to do for looking at this point is um, imagine what its unit tangent vector is going to look like. And it's, that unit tangent vector is going to be in the direction of velocity, which um, you can see is just sort of that tan the tangent line here, hence the name tangent vector. And it will be going this way. And you can see that the next thing we're going to want to plot out is the normal vector, which we know has to be orthogonal to that tangent vector, and it also has to be in the direction of turning. And since this is sort of turning downward, we know that that normal vector is going to be in this direction. Now, um, this is our sort of our TN framework. We don't really need B in this case, but using this, um, next thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and throw in that acceleration vector. Now we can go ahead and decompose this acceleration vector into its tangential and normal components, and um, it's not too bad. So its tangential component we'll look at first. Um, it's called A sub T, and it's going to have the magnitude shown here. And um, we can simply find this magnitude by taking the projection of our acceleration vector A onto our unit tangent vector T. That projection is going to give us that magnitude A sub T we're looking for. And as for the normal component, call it A sub N, um, we have um, this magnitude. And we can find it by taking similarly taking the projection of A onto N. And that's really the main idea behind it. The rest is really just kind of cranking through. Um, but um, before we go there, and since we're looking at the, the geometry, let's just go ahead and define um, a theta here. And we'll call this the angle between the tangent and acceleration vectors. Um, and we'll just kind of see how this changes as we look at a couple questions just to test the understanding of this. All right, so let's first take a look at the tangential component of acceleration. And um, let's say that our tangential component of acceleration a sub t is greater than zero. If that's the case, what do you suppose we could say about the object's speed? Yeah, it's going to be speeding up. Just like when that rocket was accelerating upward, it was going to have a a sub t that's greater than zero because it's accelerating in that direction um, that it's going. 
Um, and as you can see from this geometry, this would correspond to theta being between 0 and pi over 2. Then it's going to have some positive tangential component of acceleration. So what if a sub t is less than 0? What then could you say about the object speed? It's going to be slowing down. And in this case, that is going to mean that your theta is going to be between pi over 2 and pi. And finally, what if a sub t equals 0? What can you say about the object speed? Well, just like with the orbit, um, a sub t was 0 because it was at a constant speed as it was orbiting. And in that case, our theta would be exactly pi over 2. Now let's move on to the normal component. And let's say that um, a sub n was equal to 0. In that case, what do you suppose we could say about the object's direction of velocity? Well, um, we could say that it is not turning. And this is as in the case when the rocket's initial launch it was going up. We had a sub n is 0. It wasn't turning. It was just going straight up. And what if a sub n is not equal to 0? What then can we say about the object's direction of velocity? Well, if n, a sub n is not equal to 0, we can say it's definitely turning. Because any a sub n is going to cause that object to turn a little bit in, in some direction. Um, and just finally, to complete this table, um, let's just note that um, the tangential acceleration will tell you absolutely nothing about an object's change in direction, while the normal acceleration component similarly will tell you nothing about an object's change in speed. And that sort of fills out our table here. So those are the basics of tangential and normal acceleration components. Um, we can simplify these equations a little bit. We'll save that for the next video. Um, we can actually kind of convert these equations so we don't actually have to find the t and the n vectors, which can take a little bit of work to find. And we'll go ahead and apply that to an example problem. And until next time, take care.